Thanks for listening to CarCast on Podcast One. Hey, everybody. This is Spike Ferriston from Spike's Car Radio. We're out here in the porch of uh, at the Malibu Kitchen at the Malibu Country Mart every weekend doing podcasts. My first guest is Jerry Seinfeld. He's right here. We're going to have Jeremy Piven. We're going to have Chris Hardwick. See you soon on Spike's Car Radio. I think he's over-projecting for a podcast. <laughs> and I love to over-project for podcasts. Join me every week at podcastone.com and Apple Podcasts. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. No choice but to get on. Mandate, get on. Welcome to yet another car cast. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Matt, the moderator, DeAndrea. Hello. We are uh, doing a special podcast from my trailer in Irwindale. It's a racetrack. Uh, where are we? What city are we in? Irwindale. Oh, Irwindale. Yeah. <laughs> It's a very, it's very confusing. It's appropriately, appropriately named track. Irwindale it's Race Irwindale, Ride. Yeah. yeah, Ken Block is our guest. Uh, you know Ken from the Jim Connor and all the all the racing and all the, I mean, four hundred million plus views on YouTube. Good to see you, Ken. Thanks for having me. Uh, so we're all doing this project out here. I don't think we're supposed to talk about the project, but I I'll know. just, I'll just tell for, all of you. For some reason, we just started a podcast in the in the. The, the boss walked in back there. Where <laughs> oh. We could talk a little bit about what we're doing, right? We could say that we're doing a Forza Motorsport commercial. Okay. Well, I <laughs> we can't got see the, the boss. Of it <laughs> we got his, the nod back there. When his head starts. It's <laughs> his job on the line. No big <laughs> <Yeah>. deal. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll do a slightly abridged version of CarCast because uh, it's lunch break for us, and uh, they're going to need us back on the set pretty soon so uh, ken so i was talking to you about uh the, the all-wheel drive and drifting all-wheel drive and it, it seemed like a little counterintuitive because you think well the, you want the rear end coming around and then you picture all those 240 sx's so they started and like all the cars the mustangs like, yeah everything was just rear wheel drive and now you told me it was better to have the all-wheel drive but i hear about the incredible obstacles <laughs> Yeah, like you have it's to better get... if you can make it work. But otherwise, good luck. But uh, is it? Is it? I mean, if you could put a number to it, like percentage wise, is it that much better? Like, if you built another super drifting mobile, would you go? It's got to be all wheel drive people, and we got to do all this to get by it, or we can just go rear wheel because of all the hurdles we had to get over. Uh, well, for me, it, it's all wheel drive or nothing. It's just what I've done my entire race career. Now, remember say back in the 80s oversteer was basically something that was a mistake like in formula one right right? that was like oh crap the tires are getting hot we're oversteering now but in rally in the 80s they started using all-wheel drive um and you started seeing uh you know videos and the tv coverage you know from corsica and and australia all these places where there's using all-wheel drive cars, but sliding them around, these hairpins and, and everywhere. So really controlled sliding really came from rally, not only in the you know, 60s, 70s and real simple rear-wheel drive, but then in the 80s in all-wheel drive. And from there on, all of rally, be it tarmac or gravel, uh, is really the, the, the main part of sort of controlled oversteer with all-wheel drive. So, I, it, so to explain, we haven't really changed much with the car. We, we control a lot of kind of the balance of the car and how it turns and everything with the way the diffs work and how the suspension is set up. We can dial in more oversteer or uh, more understeer, all that sort of stuff. But sliding an all-wheel drive car is something that's been done since the 80s. And yeah. it's actually really quite normal type operation. And well, since I started racing rally, 2005, I basically had to learn how to slide an all-wheel drive car around on gravel. Right. Now, it makes sense now because I picture your explanation is succinct because I'm picturing, I'm picturing drifting. But now when I'm thinking about rallying yeah. and all those, all of them, but especially the starting off with the quattros and stuff. It just sliding all the way around those courses in Europe, right. watching clips of it last night on Leno's garage. And, you know, it can't be overstated enough. People on the inside of the corner, people on the outside of the corner who can touch defenders. It goes by. Yeah. I mean, absolute insanity. And, you know, you travel through 
United States and you see a guy drinking a beer on a, on, in a cafe and smoking a cigarette and you're like, uh, what? somebody arrest that guy. He's going to get into trouble. He's got a beer and a cigarette. I don't care if it's outdoors. And there's kids around area? here. What's yeah. On? And there they're just holding a beer and everyone's just flying past. And one thing that Matt and I have been talking about, and you might have some insight to this, is you know, we're always talking about the collector car market and, and where it's gone and, and, you know, buy an old Ferrari, buy an old Lamborghini. But So we've been noticing that old race cars have been getting expensive and specifically old rally cars, 80s, like rally, 80s and 90s, like really, you know, the Renaults yeah. and, and all, all the Fords, all of it, like that. That market has jumped a lot. I don't know if you've been following that market. I don't know if you have any of those cars. I do, I, yeah. I, I do and, I, and I follow that stuff. Uh, there's a couple reasons for that. A, the 80s is um, it's the Group E era of rallies. So right. The Lancia Delta and, um, and the uh, Audi Quattros and the Ford RS200. Yeah. Those, those were already quite valuable, and now they've just become more and more sort of rare and hard to find because people are actually just holding on to them more, too. And then the 90s, uh, I just tried to buy a, a, a 90s Group A Escort, uh, and they're getting harder and harder to find because now the 25-year year rule of not only importing them but also uh, racing them. So once a car becomes a certain age, then it's eligible for classic rallies. Oh, now right. the early 90s are coming into that age, so all these cars, the Group A... WRC cars are all being harder and harder to find, and the prices are just going up. That's an interesting I, point of view hit, because you're looking at them to race them, and we're looking at them. We're starting to see them show up at, like, RM and Gooding auctions where you would never see these well, cars well, right. well, pulling 100, 200, some 300 grand. Right. Well, well, the demand for the race yeah. has then caused the price to go up. That's basically what we're seeing. We've seen it a lot in just the last couple years of the See, early that's, 90s cars. That's a vintage Ford Escort. But if you want just a vintage Escort, yeah. like if you just hit the streets <laughs> and you're looking for, I can get you a deal. The 90s Escorts are much cheaper than like today's versions. Yeah. You get a super break on vintage. Is just 90s not the Ford age Escorts, or the just, era? Just <laughs> 90s era Escorts okay. all day long, man. Could I give you a break on them? Yeah, real quick, let me tell you about a loan. Back for the fourth season with a crazy new twist. The rules have changed. Ten survivalists are still dropped into an unforgiving wilderness, but now it's five competing teams. Brothers, fathers, sons. Uh, uh, there's a married couple in there. It's a different kind of survival show. Besides their teammate, they're truly alone. No camera crews. They film themselves. No gimmicks. No forced challenges. Smart, man. Teams are split. Equipped with five items each to win, they must find each other and survive the very unforgiving North Vancouver Island, the longest, and they're $500,000 up for grabs. Whoever wins this thing's going home with a boatload of money. Tune in for our all new season Thursday, 10 o'clock, 9 central on History. That's alone, 10 o'clock, Thursday, 9 central, only on History. So, <laughs> You know, when we were at um, Goodwood, yeah, a couple of – wait, you must have been to Goodwood. He, he yeah, was at yeah. Hill Climb when we were there last year. Right, right. The, the, wait, we were at the Hill Climb. Last year. Right. The Hill Climb was like last week. Oh, right, right. And so we were all there the year right, before. Okay. Now it's all coming back to me. But they, <laughs> they got a vintage rally up there at the top. Have you seen that? Uh, well, they have a very nice – Kind of narrow stage up there. Yeah, it's not really not your kind of rally, but I mean, it seems it's like the first I saw of like what I would call like a vintage rally event. I didn't know about vintage. Yeah, I I I don't know that they only run vintage cars. Oh, they probably run everything. Yeah, yeah. because I've run uh, a Focus and a Fiesta up there, uh, but most of the cars uh, that you see that come out uh, are are older cars, and that's the amazing thing about Goodwood. You go there and you watch the hill climb. If you're interested in Formula One cars, you know, or, or, you know, DTM cars or, you know, modern bikes and modern cars, like it's amazing to stand on the side of that road and and watch those things go up. But then you can go to the top of the hill and watch that rally stage and see amazing classic, you know, Group B rally cars. We didn't even notice that when we were there. We're like, where are these people going through the forest in these cars? And we're like, there's another 
event. There's like rally cars, and then we saw like uh, uh, guys on motorcycle, like Supercross, fl- flying through the air on another part of the. Like we didn't get a chance to see hardly any of that stuff. No, I genuinely think that's one of the best car events. It's a great event in the entire world. We were just it talking is. about like, every time mistake, Ford's like, going. "You have to go to Goodwood." I'm like, "Oh." Damn it! <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I get to go drive race cars for three days and, yeah. and look at all this amazing equipment. But on an estate in southern England, it is stunningly beautiful. And I mean, it's so beautiful and so picturesque. I mean, it's where the Rolls Royce factory is. Yeah, yeah. if you know that, they, they, yeah. they, they, their factory is on the southern part of that property. Yeah, you it's pass literally by. just you at the pass, end of the road. Yeah, you when, pass you, when by. you go down the road, and yeah. you know, actually, for you. And the kind of equipment that you drive, the the only downside, if there is a downside to Goodwood, is it could be raining when you're out on the, the track in your slicks or whatever, your car that's not really meant for that. But but the kind of stuff you drive, that's actually just kind of ups the, the fun factor, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, if you're to have one car out there that really fits that sort of situation, it's an all-wheel drive car. And we generally bring... A wet option set of tires for just for that exact reason. It's England. It's going to rain at some point. I had slicks uh, yeah. that somebody took like um, a soldering iron to and just yeah. put some like chevrons. It looked like that, but we just it. used a white sharpie oh, to make it look like it was I didn't, I didn't feel anything there. when yeah. I moved my hand. Yeah. But my hand yeah. was white. We're like, we don't want to make Adam nervous. <laughs> Let's just draw some grooves with a white sharpie <laughs> from five feet away. It looks like it. Was so basically, what I had was. <laughs> No, not a good set of dries or wets. I said I'd made some in betweens. The uh, yeah, you're so, fine. Yeah, it was fine. So uh, Jim Connor, we we're talking about uh, seven was L A. Yes. How do as someone who comes from L A. Oh, you come from L A. How how long is the permitting and the pulling of the you know the cops and the blockage of the streets? And it's like I, I, I imagine it's a lot like your shooting fast and furious or something is just get in there and start pulling get pull a bakery ticket and start <laughs> writing checks well thank god i don't know um <laughs> i'm i'm the lucky one that gets to sit in the driver's seat I, there's we have very good production companies uh that do all that stuff for us but I, I imagine when the, you say the, i want to do Jim Connor, let's do la downtown la dodger stadium everything they say okay give me two years and we'll put it together yeah, I, I, we work with very good production companies, very good scouts. It's it's like Transformers wants to rent whatever downtown street. And yeah. you, we go through the same process. Uh, you is, know, is everything Sunday night at 5 in the morning, or is there noise restrictions? Uh, it all depends. Like, we do neighborhood stuff during the week when everyone's at school and at right. work. And we do downtown stuff on the weekends when, you know, the financial district's obviously not working so it's it's all very smartly done by people much smarter about that stuff than me. So. Is there is there a is there a, a so, Moby Dick or a you know just sort of fantasy like through Manhattan down you know Broadway Times Square like like where you want to do the, the completely yeah, underwater? The, yeah, I mean, do you have a you know Blues Brothers through a shopping mall? Like, is is there something that's on your bucket list um i have to say that uh i've been very lucky to do the the videos that we've done we've done nine of them and now we're now working on the concept of 10 um but i'd have to say that because i grew up in southern california and i grew up watching movies like bullet san francisco was, was like it's like the ultimate playground to me la is cool i enjoyed playing in la but san francisco just with all the elevation changes and jumps and the water in the background and like twisty streets like and we we basically set out a menu of like what would be the funnest stuff to do and we were able to do almost everything that we wanted so i gotta say it, it's kind of a letdown when you do the best thing you've ever wanted to do and then like what do you do next you yeah. know but i've been lucky to continue to do stuff in in dubai and here in la and and you know then continue to, yeah. to have, have sponsors that back for me Ken, when you've done everything you want to do as to what do you do next? You start a podcast. <laughs> yeah. That's 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 when you're done. When you're about you talking about other people, what much, they want to do. Everything's just kind of <laughs> in the rearview mirror. Yeah. <laughs> just start a podcast. Your partner's hosting the Oscars. <laughs> you just start a podcast. You call it life. That, yeah. That's how it works. All right. Let's see. How are we doing on? Oh boy. Jeez. 
What's the time? Let me tell you about uh, Garage Boss. Oh, man, love these guys. Biggest complaint about changing the oil, the cleanup. But now there's Garage Boss. We have these guys. I think we hung out with them at SEMA, right, Matt? Yeah, we did. That woman had a lot of energy. She was fun. She gave me a care package with... um, It's like... It was like there Purell, were mints, and, Purell mints. and stripper glitter. Yeah, <laughs> stripper juice. <laughs> Thankfully, I had my own stripper glitter already. Uh, Garage Boss, they're the uh, oil drain pans. Uh, got a full line of drain pans with no mess solutions like uh, disposable tearaway sheets, integrated funnels. Just drain directly into the Garage Boss container and put it in your trunk and drive to the nearest recycling auto parts store and boom, done. Bob's your uncle. So, from oil pan to drain pan to recycling center, it's just that easy. It's available at Amazon.com. Just use uh, search Garage Boss. That's Garage, B-O-S-S. Good company, good product. We love it. We use it. Uh, so, Ken. Uh, the next, the next yes. evolution of the Jim Gymkhana videos is the Climb Kana. Right? Is that, what, is that what it's called? Yeah, I'm just trying to come up with more excuses to <laughs> go drive places I want to drive. But yeah, like, So explain that. What's that going to be? Uh, well, Pikes Peak is somewhere that uh, I, I've I raced up at once in, in 2005, and I watched it like as a kid uh, with a lot of interest. And, and really one of the things that caught my attention was back in the, in the 80s when – uh, the Quattro came over and set the fastest time, and seeing the all-wheel drive cars go up, it was just really cool to me because that's what I could relate to because I really liked rally. Uh, so I've always wanted to go back there, but I, I also like to kind of go to some of these places, you know, like with the Jim Connor series, and and not race per se. It's more of having fun with the car, you know, sliding around, driving with a lot of oversteer, and kind of driving the way that I watched my heroes drive in the 80s and 90s very sideways in the rally cars so to be able to go to somewhere like pike's peak and be able to not only drive some of those sections quite quick but really you know slide some of those epic corners and even set up you know little situations where i'm you know doing other sort of gymkhana type uh technical driving some fun stuff yeah we put different obstacles up there from figure eights and donut boxes to even sliding around a helicopter but yeah so so having that mountain as a playground to to race up it and play is just like really a literal dream come true for me so 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 that one you're like you just you you like give the park ranger some money but like let me borrow your mountain for a little while yeah, no. We're gonna bring a couple cars and a helicopter. I really or wish two. it was that easy, man. You make it sound. <laughs> it so seems easy. like it's easier. I than think it's actually harder. Red San Francisco. I think it's harder doing that than renting a, a downtown street in L.A. Um, you know what? But it, it's amazing that I have great sponsors like Toyo that's backing, uh, you know, ClimbCon along with Pennzoil that they are willing to listen to my crazy ideas and say, "Yeah, we'll get behind that," and you know, I get to go off and really have fun doing one of my fantasies and do it with a 1400 horsepower yeah. car and uh make a piece of marketing out of it that not only i think that uh i really enjoy to watch like i, I make this stuff that me and my friends and all the guys that work for me we love making this stuff because it's it's what we want to watch on the internet and so it just happens to be that a lot of the fans like to watch that too so i really am quite a lucky bastard that i get to do this stuff i have a Great well, racing career, I, and I get to do this fun stuff. But, I, you know, I think it, it's been, you know, it, it's such a weird new world order now where everyone has to kind of invent themselves and create and build a market and build a brand and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, just the fact that you've been able to just build a brand. You know, there's so many, you know, it's like, you know, Schumacher is great, but I never heard, you know, I didn't... I, he got a lot of endorsements and stuff like that. And there's been many guys. There's guys, oh, we, we we're going to talk about Tanner Faust. <laughs> I forgot about, we were going to make fun of Tanner Faust. But getting out there with the, uh, uh, with the apparel and the name and the videos and the online and stuff. Like, I mean, it's really, it's, you've really done a, an amazing dynamic job. I mean, you've, you've done what we all, you know, I have to do it in show business. I have a, like a comedian. Like, you want to sell a book, you got to build a name. You got to build a brand. Like, that, but doing it, in, in the automotive space, I mean, we were just talking to a J.R. Granatelli. Yeah. And he's like, Andy Granatelli was just P.T. Barnum, man. He just built this Granatelli brand. Like, he built 
this thing. I mean, he was a race car driver, but he was a brand. Yeah. And it's just a, he's kind of it, an engineer. Like, he was just like, I'm going to do a car and I'm going to put a turbine engine in it. And I'm going to get Parnelli Jones in the car and I'm going to build wacky stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, uh, hats off to you. Sponsored Monster Energy drink. Hats off to you. For, <laughs> Thank you for for and Ford for for yeah. just building that brand. I mean, it's 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 an unbelievable empire. Well, it's funny though that like I I think that today uh, we're kind of at an interesting merge of things. It's been going on obviously for a while, but with the internet, like I grew up a rally fan, but I had to find it in the magazines. I had to. Wait till maybe someone decided to put Pikes Peak or a rally on TV. That was the only way to watch it. But nowadays, all you got to do is go to YouTube or Google and type in R A L L Y, you know, and yeah. you'll come up with all sorts of options. So I think that being able to showcase stuff that we like to showcase, you know, from a custom car build to sliding a corner a certain way, not only are we as brand makers and athletes able to do things that just weren't possible in the past. But as a consumer, you have so many more options out there to kind of see what you want to see. And for us making the Jim Connor series, we're just showcasing something to me that I wanted to see as a kid. I wanted to watch the car slide around and do cool stuff. So we're having fun dreaming that stuff up and then actually making it and doing it as real as we possibly can. Ken's being very humble because take the internet i love porn yeah but i don't i make let me correct that i make very little of it these days <laughs> myself and especially the guy on guy stuff i've almost that's way less than 15 percent of my business now <laughs> <laughs> hooniganracing.com is uh, where you go uh the you you should just go to hoonigan to see what uh, what's coming up next what events what what merch what what whatever the h-o-o-n-i-g-a-n racing.com shoot uh ken a uh, tweet at uh, k block 43 instagram at k block 43 ken i know there's another rally coming up canada in about a month if memory serves that you're going to be at can we see that online on tv on cable uh yes so uh that's a uh, part of the world rally cross championship that i'm racing in that's our only event in north america uh 10 of the Races are over in Europe, uh, one in North America and one in South Africa. Uh, so wow. that one's in about four weeks up in uh, up near Montreal, Canada. And uh, you can see that on, I think, Ford Performance broadcasted here live on their Facebook page. Huh? I don't know what that's saying. <laughs> Ken, Ken's looking at his people and they're all shrugging. The, yeah, oh, yeah, YouTube. probably on YouTube, YouTube as well. As well. Yeah. Okay. If you don't know what YouTube it is, just, and Facebook. just tweet Ken Block and ask him yeah. again and again and again until uh, he replies. Quick break to talk about Geico. Everybody's got the to-do list. Huh? You've got to drop off the dry cleaning. you got to uh, pick up the milk, uh, take out the cat, bring in the dog. No, I think you put the dog. Anyway, go to Geico. Save hundreds of dollars in a car insurance. You don't have to drop anything off or pick anything up. Just go to Geico.com. 15 minutes, you could be saving 15% or more on your auto insurance. Why wouldn't you save a whole lot of money? Put that extra money in your pocket and uh, get an extra set of tires that uh, can block and burn off for you doing a donut. Just go to Geico.com. In 15 minutes, you could be saving 15% or more on your car insurance. Geico. All right. I know they're going to want us out on set, so uh, thanks for yeah. carving out some time, Ken. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you. We've got to have you come in Always again. Always enjoy talking to you guys. And until next time, this is Adam Kroll for Ken Block and Matt the Moderator. DeAndrea saying keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. For the latest updates and call-in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla Digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit CarCastShow.com. CarCast Show.